Hi, and welcome to the morning meeting. I'm Courtney Hirsch, COO of John Boy Media, and I'm here with Maddie Mass. We have a fun agenda for today. We're going to do some recap on what's going on with MLB playoffs, how the upfront went. We recently launched a sub stack, which is really exciting. So we have some um, community comments and questions about that that we're going to get into. So yeah, it's going to be a good episode. How are you doing, Maddie? I'm good. I know that you had some traffic troubles this morning, so hopefully that is in the rear view. Yeah, and I'm, I'm done with is, it now. Yeah, this <laughs> is like able to be a able to help you forget all of that nonsense. Um, but yeah, otherwise I'm doing well. The Yankees play today, so are you invested? Like, is your heart on the line when you go home, or no? I'm invested. My heart is not on the line because... Is your head in, on the line? <laughs> yeah. Is your brain on the line? My brain's on the line. I'm very invested in the game. I've been watching them closely, and I feel it when they lose and win. Um, personally, for my family, <laughs> business-wise, so right. there's a lot of different factors that go into it. And, I mean... Looking at the playoffs as a whole, we have done some really cool streams on both Jam Baseball, Talking Yanks, and then we've also had like secondary streams that have gone out on Cherry Pinstripes, uh, Shea Station channels, and across the board, I feel like we've adopted, Jimmy really wanted to do a more team-centric streaming strategy this year, right? So we're focusing on this is the one game we're watching. We are fans in the room, which we didn't really have the luxury of last mm -hmm. year, just given the teams that were in October. But now that we have that luxury, I feel like there's been a lot of success that has come out of these streams. Yeah, I'm seeing it. I think um, we're seeing tangible results, like the amount of you know viewers we have, concurrence, peak viewers, the amount of messages that are in the chat. But then I'm also seeing just intangible results of the vibes and the energy that are in the office. And I really like how we're leveraging our like all of the creators that um, have a part in like building John Boy Media's baseball presence. I think that we've done a much better job this year of utilizing everyone we have and then like leaning into like one person's energy. So Jimmy described it to me as like, like, or Mets, it's like Jolly's in the middle seat, like he's going to lead the energy for the room. And then there's like supporting characters. And I think that has worked really well to give each stream their, its own identity. For sure. Yeah. To give some of those tangible numbers, just because I know that this audience likes the little in-depth tidbits here and there. Talking Yanks, that's a channel that had gained about 10,000 subscribers throughout the regular season. And as of the beginning of this week, it had been seven days into playoffs. They'd already gained over 2,000 subscribers. So just seeing subscriber growth jump up a ton. Mm. Same with Shea Station, 1,000 subs in the first week, whereas that wasn't the case throughout the regular season. And just the stream numbers year over year have really grown so that the floor the base number of views that we're getting off of these streams is just always growing from 2022 into 2023 yeah. and now 24. In addition to the stream numbers growing, can you speak to the sponsors? I know that oh, yeah. this was a, a cool LinkedIn post by Luke, but um, so Luke sent me the photos yeah. of the difference between our stream in what was that? 2021, 2021. and 2024. And then he quickly posted it on LinkedIn himself because he was like, you're going to steal it for yeah. your own LinkedIn if I don't post it now. So I think he did like an 11 p.m. post. And I was like, you're so right. I was going to steal it. And <laughs> I may still steal it. <laughs> but that honestly, when he sent me that, it was after a really long day. Um, I was already like lying in bed and I was just like exhausted thinking about like all the problems I have to solve at this company and all the challenges that we're facing, which is very normal. And when he sent me those photos it like I kind of paused because I was like holy shit that was our stream just three years ago we were in the Bronx office you could tell it looks like we're in like I don't know like a very like shitty apartment which yes. it kind of was <laughs> and then um it was Jimmy Jake Trev right and like our sole sponsor was dugout mugs so, you know props to dugout mugs and thanks for supporting us um back in the day but Fast forward just three years later, we have so many different creators involved in the stream. We're in our nice new office. 
Our sponsors in the video are Mountain Dew, Corona, T-Mobile, SeatGeek. So just like, and the production looks so much better, mm -hmm. like how we're presenting the stream. Um, so it was kind of just like a pinch me moment and a really nice moment to like, be like, holy shit, like look what we've done in three years. Three years ago, if you told us we were going to be in a new office with a bunch of new creators and blue chip sponsors, we would have thought like, holy shit, like we made it. We accomplished what we wanted to do. And now yeah. we still have, we still have so much more we want to do, but it's nice to like remember. Where oh, we're. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it felt so cool in 2021 and it feels so cool now. Like, I feel like the feelings are the same while you're in the room, mm -hmm. but yeah, when you look at it large picture, that's when it's really yeah. hits you right in the mm -hmm. face. Uh, the other thing that is really deserving of, of their props is the social team. They've passed the 900,000 mark on the main Instagram, 400,000 on the main Twitter, 400,000 on Jimmy's personal Instagram. And this is what I want your reaction to. Jerry Seinfeld <laughs> and John Mayer are now both interacting with the Shea Station account, which that's another one. If you told me, you know, Jolly started Shea Station in 2021. Jerry Seinfeld's interacting with your account. Yeah, in, in I love years. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I love how we're not afraid to like interact with them. I know Taylor, who leads our social team, she was like DMing with John Mayer and half the office was like freaking out that she was <laughs> doing that and half the office was encouraging it. And yes. I, I love that she leaned into that. But huge props to the social team. They are they're crushing it. Um, they are, you know, working 24 seven, seven days a week. Like they don't stop. They're on the pulse of everything. I think they are the leaders in our, one of our core values, be first, be best or be both. And they're always first and they're putting out like just content that like we have a unique point of view and they really carry that unique personality and tone throughout all of our social channels. So Taylor has really crushed it leading the team. And it's kind of like one of our best, like well-oiled machines. For sure. Uh, last part here before I want to jump into some family stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the merch team is also crushing it. Uh, I think Jazz Chisholm yeah. wore our shirt, which was super cool during his pregame workout and, and interview on TV. That was a massive day for the merch team. So from your from your seat, what is when you see Jazz Chisholm's wearing our shirt, not only wearing it, but like ta mm -hmm. actively talking yeah. about it on TV, what what is the first things thoughts that hit your mind? Yeah, I think one the first thing that hit my mind is when Jazz was talking about it on TV, he talked about why he liked the shirt so much. And he talked about his teammates and how it was just a great representation of him. And I was so proud that our team created a shirt that represented someone's personality and that he is wearing it on national TV. And I just thought, how cool is that? Like we, we know the personalities of each individual player yes. so much that mm -hmm. they are proud to wear this and then explain to others why they love it so much. Yep. So I know Sarah designed that shirt and um, yeah, it was just like huge props to her for being like so in the weeds with, what our players like and what our community likes. And like, that's what drives the results. Absolutely. Um, before we jump into some familial talk, mm -hmm. I wanted to tell you about DraftKings because it has been 162 games, but it is finally time for some October baseball. So get in on all of the playoff action at DraftKings Sportsbook from same game parlays to live betting to odds boost and so much more. DraftKings has you covered until a champ is crowned. So right now, all new customers who bet just $5 will instantly get $200 in bonus bets when using the code meeting. So stay in on the action and use your $200 in bonus bets to bet anytime home runs on DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code meeting and bet just $5 on any wager to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That is promo code meeting only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Um, I will admit that when I'm prepping for these episodes, yeah. I more or less <laughs> feel like I have to stalk you and Jimmy's calendars. <laughs> I like it. So, Wait, before we get into the family stuff, I have ahead. a question for you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And I don't know if I should say this or not, but uh, we can always for cut it. morning meeting. <laughs> yeah, sure. This is, I think this is okay. How main YouTube channels approaching 2 million subs. Yeah. See? 
this is what I was afraid of. Do no, we talk okay. about this or not? No, no, it, we can definitely <laughs> talk about it. it. This is, this because is something Because I was that's... going to write it for those of you that are listeners. I write this internal memo every Monday morning. It's called Full Court Press, the internal version. And I talk about what's on the top of my mind. And I did a bunch of shout outs this week because our team is really crushing it. And I was going to say the mm. U- main YouTube channel is approaching 2 million subs. And then I got super freaked out and superstitious about it that I deleted it from the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel about that? Do you think I should have deleted it? Do you think it should have been included? And when are we going to cross the 2 million mark? I Let me see. <gasps> okay, so I-, I wanted to get the actual analytics of what happened yesterday mm-hmm. because... I can tell you the average weekly number of subscribers that that channel gets is sits normally between two and two and a half thousand new subscribers, okay. right? So even though we just crossed the threshold from 1.98 to 1.99, mm-hmm. we have 10,000 to go. In theory, we'd still be looking at like four weeks until right. we truly got there. That's what I thought. However, Jimmy puts out an incredibly timely breakdown. We gained 3,000 subscribers yesterday alone, and that breakdown is still going to get more traction today. So now we're sitting on, as we record, 1.995. Mm-hmm. So I think we it have, was 1.992 when I walked home yesterday. Yeah, yeah the 3,000. Exactly. So we have less than 5,000 subscribers to go to hit that 2 million. I think, to answer your direct question... Yes, you we should we should just start talking about it. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we should just start talking about it and not treat it as like a superstitious thing. But you uh, also knocked on wood when I first brought it up. So yes, we're kind of on the same page. <laughs> yes, it, there's definitely a balance to be had, that's for sure. Um I do want I, I think the reason that at the end of the day we let's just go for it and talk about it and get everybody excited about it is I know that Jimmy won't do that himself. Yeah. And it's like a massive milestone that's taken so long and so much work and we're finally here. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy won't give himself those props. Right. So I'm glad that morning is now between you and I. Yeah, exactly. That we can now just We're going to drive this conversation. Okay. Yeah, we we have balloons planned. We did balloons for 1 million. Mm. Um, So- there will be the two M balloons nice. coming. Well, that's cool. Um, I yeah. have Jimmy's um, one hundred thousand subscriber. We got balloons for that before we even had the Bronx office. Right. Yeah, we're in Lava Let. So yeah. maybe that's a LinkedIn post. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> if you have pictures of that, that's yes. awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I say that we keep doing it. Do you want to make predictions of when we cross that threshold? Okay, let me see. Honey. Today is the morning of Wednesday, October 9th. Mm-hmm. We are on 1.995 after gaining 3,000 wow. subs yesterday. So we need 5,000 to go. I think the 25th. October 25th? Yeah. Okay. My honest prediction, Yeah. I think that the Yankees will... This is an actual knock on woods situation. Okay, <laughs> I think the Yankees I think the Yankees will advance past the Royals. Oh my God. That's a really knock on woods it situation. It is. It is. <laughs> but I do think that there will be like natural boosts that come from like those yeah. moments. So I'm going earlier than you. Okay. I will say Monday the fourteenth. Okay. I hope you're right. At 548 the 14th that's in like I five know. Day. that's okay you're going way earlier i'm going me. yeah i'm, I'm going, going a little early. safe All no right. and that's fine yes yeah. <laughs> and that's you're you're like based off of the stats mine are just based off of yeah, pure God. adrenaline yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i'm my my guess is that it'll be like after five so people will like stay around yeah and just yeah wait. yeah that's cool um all right let's okay. let's jump back yeah. into the agenda here yeah I liked our little excursion down <laughs> the secret <laughs> subscriber path. Um, you were able to bring your son into work. I think it was last week, right? Yes, I brought both of them. Okay. Yeah, because there was two Jew- there was a Jewish holiday, so they were off two days. But I can't bring both of them in on the same day. For anyone that knows, that has that's a brother that's. 
two years apart or something. Right. <laughs> that Into would the be workplace. a lot of uh, breaking up fights <laughs> <laughs> all day. But they're best friends, but they fight every second. So I got my oldest got Thursday because I had more meetings on Thursday. So I needed someone that could occupy himself more. And then Edison, my uh, four year old, he got Friday. Yeah, it oh, was cute. What was that? Like, I saw you went out to lunch. Yeah, we went out to lunch. My husband met us. I mean, we came in late. We left early. So it was, you know, it was a day that a four-year-old can handle. Right. And I kind of realized that, like, I cannot, I love them here, but it has to be a special treat. Yeah. Because two days in a row of, like, having them on my mind. Right. But it's cool because um, Brett, my husband, he got a week off work. That was the like one of the first weeks school started and um, cause he was off work and school hadn't started fully yet. He took each of the kids to do something special for the day. So I was really jealous that he got that like one-on-one -on -one bonding time with them. So this is kind of my way to bond with the kids and that I could bring them to work. They're really excited about it. They get experience. And then they also see something that like I love doing, like they know how happy this place makes me. So it's kind of like a, you know, kill two birds with one stone but That's great. yeah i love it the the other family tie-in here is that i believe it's your third cousin third cousin i yes. think that's what jimmy said so feel free to correct him <laughs> if he's wrong but your, your third cousin emily from ireland yeah is here visiting her her dad is on business right mm -hmm. and so she is here and spending time at the john boy media office she was here yesterday and here again today um what has that been like i i, I overheard you saying that she was just so excited to be in new york city she was it was, it was really it's like cute it's like normal. my work where right. like i'm like walking like so like annoyed you know just like trying to get to work and she's like oh my god this is your walk to work this is amazing and that's like oh that's such a cool perspective that to pull you back um but she is she's really sweet and just like having a really great time seeing from like the first hand she saw like sat in on a breakdown. She sat in on a podcast. She's in the sales team meeting right now. So she did like a Mountain Dew client call with Luke. So I'm just like plopping her in anywhere that she could um, just gain experience through like observing how a media company works, which is. Yeah, she's loving it. That's so exciting. Yeah. And she's like, why is there a Dunkin' Donuts on every corner? That's yeah. so she can't solve that mystery. I'm like, I can't help you. I have no idea why we have Good so many question, Good question, but also bad question. They, they should be on every corner. I know. We keep on stopping. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and this ties back to when I said, uh, yes, I did stalk your calendar. Uh, you have some fun events. I f believe it's tonight and not yeah. last night. but going to some fun experiences with her tonight yeah um, we're doing the friends experience okay which, good i'm glad yeah have wait have you been? i've been there oh and it's awesome oh, okay great and great. i believe it was like that or something else on yes. your calendar yes and so i was going to make a pitch that oh. you should be choosing the friends experience because it was a lot of fun i gave her the choice the good. friends experience or the edge right and then um luke my you know younger brother he was like you gotta think of her instagram what po what pictures can she post right <laughs> so we're really trying to cater to emily's instagram we're going to crumble yep. i found this cute coffee shop right. kiana has taken her on little adventures so yeah. it's a team effort and then i mean talking about instagram pictures max brenner is another place oh. i've been and i assume mm -hmm. you've been yes i've been okay. but a while ago yeah so. that's a ton of fun too yeah um, so you guys are going to have a night tonight, yeah. which is exciting. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh. Um, all right, let's jump back into the business world a bit mm -hmm. because we launched a sub stack, which is exciting. Do you call it sub stack or do you call it our website when you're talking about it? Oh, great question. Interchangeable. I, I call it sub stack. One time I said the John Boy Media website powered by sub stack. Mm. I kind of feel like it's cheating if we don't mention sub stack because... I don't know. You wouldn't call like a Patreon your website. Right. So I don't know, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm cool with both. I'm feeling it out. Love it. So yeah. a lot of the commenters refer mm -hmm. to it as the website. So in these comments, there are a few questions that came in that I was hoping to pick your brain on. Mm -hmm. Greg asked or said that he loves the new website. Wondering if there was any chance that you can add an exclusive only tab. I still want to watch the usual videos on YouTube and come into the website just to find the exclusive content all in one place. Yeah, I think that's a good call out. I don't know if we'll add an exclusive tab. I wish there was a way that you could search for exclusive content. 
because we do want to keep the content verticalized and have eventually probably have exclusive content within each of the verticals. But I hear what he's saying about just making it easy because we don't really want this to detract from YouTube and um, we're not asking viewers to like leave the platform that they enjoy viewing on. But then if they want to use the website to get to exclusive content, there should be an easy way to do that. So I think we're still kind of working through that. Yeah, and I think that the overall like Substack as a whole is fairly um, flexible so mm -hmm. that we can always design things and hopefully we can add filters if you search or stuff yeah. like that so that it does show mm -hmm. just exclusive yeah. content. Makes sense. Um, Dan, Dan Flashes asked, uh, do you have an idea of how often you will post new exclusive videos like the watching ones there? The Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes mm -hmm. were a fun change of pace. Yeah. We don't have a like set cadence right now. I think you'll see us leaning into more exclusive content in the off season. Mm -hmm. And we might um, dedicate like the next couple of after the playoffs to doing some of those more like JM entertainment style videos and that we can really engage like our core community members with. Um, and then we're just going to have to figure it out a new schedule once the season starts again, like what kind of exclusive content that we can keep up with. I think we don't want to like out, pace ourselves and right kind of yeah uh, over promise and under deliver that's the situation that we're really trying to avoid with a sub stack yeah and i also think that um zach had recently found a bit of a, a honey hole um of a lot of those that mm. we had to take off of youtube completely oh, really? so uh, what's currently up there was the stuff that was privated or left unlisted on youtube mm -hmm. and so we were able to scrape all of youtube and put it up there and then zach recently found his drive that had even more of that content so we we currently do have the content and like you said we just don't want to outpace ourselves too much but do expect more of that to be coming in the yep. future that's cool i didn't know, you didn't even know that yeah um now that we've gotten some questions out of the way yeah. just wanted to grab your thoughts on just how Substack is going overall from your point of view? Uh, it's going great. I think Substack is a great platform for us because it's very low lift. We don't have to maintain a website. We don't have to have like, you know, dev on staff and like code anything. Um, I think the publishing is super easy. And then we're able to monetize right away for the people that are interested in additional benefits. So we really didn't want it to feel like we're asking you to pay for something that's free. Like there is a huge value prop um, when we're asking, you know, subscribers to pay monthly. Like we know that's a huge ask and we want to deliver against it. But overall, the reaction has been really well received. My favorite part has been receiving the messages from like our early adopters who signed up and them like showing just support for us wanting to, just support for us as a company in general, but then also like supporting us trying new things. And that is so cool that we have built this like community that allows us to try new things. And then, yeah, we've gotten a lot of subs and a lot of paid subscribers. So it's been like awesome start right at the gate. I think it's going to be interesting to see like when playoffs are over, um, like how the momentum keeps up. And that's why we're going to lean into like more of this like guts type content watching content and we'll see if that can keep the pace up but overall it's great we, we've opened up a new revenue stream for the company and um this wasn't even you know revenue that wasn't modeled on our 2024 forecast so at this point it's kind of bonus revenue and we've made it i i, I hope it's not a headache for the content team or publishing it we can find a way to streamline it yeah and i i think Going off of when you're saying that, yeah, we will come up with some off-season plans. That's what excites me the most. You know, right now we're in a really busy month mm -hmm. where the creators are, you know, their brains are, if they have a team in the race, that's where they're focused. Right. And then they're also focused on just their content at large uh, surrounding those teams where once we do hit an off-season, I think that you'll start to see some really cool content pick yeah. up there. And just when there's a little bit more flexibility in schedules compared to October. Yeah. I think it's also been great timing that, you know, Twitter or X is kind of, it's hard to communicate 
with um, and get into those like deep discussions and be like silly and sarcastic. And that platform is just, I don't know, there's a lot of mess and trolls on that platform right now. So the chat feature on Substack, I think is bringing a lot of value where our creators can start a thread and engage with our community members without like weeding through like the nonsense. Yes, agree. Um, let's jump over to the upfront and then mm -hmm. the industry dinner that you led, because these are two things that we talked about the last time you were on about a month ago yep. and now both have happened. So would love to get reviews from you on both of those. Um, we'll start with the upfront one, just overall thoughts, but then also Daniel left a question related. How do you quantify leads or revenue from an event? He said like fanatics fest or even on a sm smaller scale, like the upfront, uh, he said, I've only worked in manufacturing where revenue is directly from a trade show or convention is easily quantifiable. Cool. It's a great question. The upfront um, was a huge success. We had a great time hanging out with potential advertisers and advertisers that have worked with us for a long time. I think what was so cool about it was all of our creators on stage talking about their content and how they're excited to integrate brands into our content. We also had um, Barrett Sports Media was there and they wrote a piece on it. And their takeaway, the three C's, which I remember was like content, community, creativity. Mm. And I was like, oh, that was such a good like summarization. And I'm so glad that that was the takeaways. Like that's the, point, the points we got across. I think that it was our first one. So I'm always thinking of like, oh, next year we got to like, we should change the time and we should change the day and we should make like more like some like higher stakes of like while you were there. But for our first upfront, I really think we knocked it out of the park and we are already seeing tangible results. And the results we wanted to see was um, engagement from those prospective brands that got their brains kind of turning of like, okay, how can I see my brand working with your creators? And we received messages after that. I think Uber is one of the clients that reached out to one of our sales um, team members and was like, oh, from the upfront, I see Uber working with We Got Ice in this specific way. So that's just like one example of the kind of discussions that came out of having an event like that. And then we will measure who came to the upfront and then did any of those brands wind up spending money with us in 2025. So a big goal for the sales team is creating more long-term strategic partners. And we had three partners last year, um, DraftKings, SeatGeek, Shady Rays that did year long deals with us. And we want to see that, you know, three number increase to like five or six next year. And that's how one of the ways we'll determine if the upfront was a success for fat fanatics fest. Um, we, uh, it's interesting cause there's a lot that went into it for us to evaluate, like, was this worth the investment and we sell merch there so we can see the merch sales. Um, we got paid an appearance fee by fanatics and then we collected email addresses. So we're doing some analysis right now on if we have someone's email address, what kind of ROI can we get from that? Either by having them eventually sign up for the sub stack or by selling them merchandise. And that's how we'll evaluate the success of Fanatics Fest. Cool. Great insight. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want to talk about it in a related world, uh, the industry dinner and how that went. I feel like um, that's even smaller, right? They go from like yeah. Fanatics Fest up front, yeah. industry dinner. And obviously the industry dinner is not so much sales forward. Um, but yeah, tell us all yeah. about it. Well, it was, I, I loved it. I mean, I woke up just to be honest that day and I was like, why the hell did I do this? Like, I don't <laughs> want to do this. I'm so nervous. What if no one shows up to my party? What if I'm socially awkward and like, okay, I have to have 10 conversation starters. And then I like, I prepare to the extreme because mm -hmm. it makes me feel more comfortable. So one of the things I did that day is I had 10 different guests showing up from different sports media companies. And I like went into their, I researched every single company and anything that they did new or they were in the news for or like went on their social media. And I had three bullet points to say about each company so that if I wanted to make 
connections or introduce, I could be like, oh, they just launched a new product. Oh, they just hired a new creator. And I could start to cultivate the conversation. So like I overprepared. I probably used like a third of that data, but yeah. that made me feel good. And the dinner was a really great success. Everyone was like, when are we doing this again? We did an icebreaker where we went around the table and all shared like a highlights. I was like, this is your time to like brag, like brag about your business. And then we shared challenges that we were facing. And a lot of, you know, companies are facing in the creator led space are facing similar challenges, which are the first being like key man risk, which is like the, your success is dependent on like one single person. And how do you diversify away from that? creator burnout, which is like a common theme we're seeing. And then, you know, diversification of like revenue and how to do creator contracts. So it was great to just have these like honest, transparent conversations with people that are trying to solve the same problems that you do. And, you know, at my level, I'm lucky I have Jimmy and Jake, but I don't really have like coworkers or peers to talk about this stuff with. So I think it was a great event for everyone there. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It sounds like a lot of fun. What did you end up eating? Do you remember? I ate, God, I ate escargot. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's and terrible. It was, it was delicious. No, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no more talk of the dinner. <laughs> that's all I had to hear. Um, that like, that is the staple food that Emily, my girlfriend, always forces upon me. Mm. Like when we've traveled. Oh, I like or, Emily. I got to uh, go out to dinner with her. By all means. I'm not going with you. You go yeah. <laughs> 20 escargos each. Yes. <laughs> I cannot do it. I, I, I've eaten them and I just don't it's have a delicious. good time. Ugh. You're just slabbing, slathering That's them the up in butter. That's the one thing I remember. Right? Yeah. It was a French place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, last question here yeah. for you before we head out. This has popped up uh, on a few channels and a uh, various different commenters. People are just curious about baggage. I know that's a series mm. that a lot of the core community members of John Boy Media love. So a couple questions all related. Uh, Jeb Fezos asked, will anything ever happen with baggage again? I remember that they let you use the first season. There were discussions uh, about later seasons. Did the first season not go as planned? Yeah. And then Tingus Pingus asked, have you ever considered renegotiating your contract for baggage? <laughs> Longtime fan of the series and Jerry Springer. Love, love watching. Um, so, God, this was a long time ago. We like licensed baggage episodes and then yeah. did the, it was pretty expensive to license if I can remember correctly. And when we evaluated how they did. They didn't make, I, I don't, I, maybe we broke even like, and that's being generous. So it's just the economics really didn't work out. We may be able to try again now that we have more brand partners involved, but yeah, it kind of like the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. So unfortunately, yeah, they, they just kind of made it too expensive for it to make sense. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that you've watched a few Guts episodes here and there. Um, mm -hmm. I lied before. This is the last question. Yeah. This is a, a super seducer week uh, on JJTV. Your face tells me that you have not watched. No, no. Good. I, I was going to ask I if you've watched. Though, those episodes are crazy. <laughs> if anybody watches this channel that hasn't gone over to John Boy and Jake TV to watch that series, it is this week. And Jimmy's episode just came out this morning. Go watch that insane content. I can't believe some of it's going out. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, Courtney, thank you so much for being here. Um, as always, please like, subscribe, leave any comments uh, down below. I believe Jimmy is shooting a vlog today, which will feature on this channel next week. But then Jimmy will be back uh, the week following. So leave any questions for him and leave a comment about your favorite thing that Courtney said today. I love that. Thanks, Maddie. Bye, Thank everyone. You.